Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Well, we went, we found out that there was two green tree outlets, grocery outlets in Yuma. So we went to the second one today. Uh, <laughs> we've got enough food to last us now for oh, way over a month, maybe two months, maybe. And aside from the meat, which we went back in and got some more meat, uh, like pork loins and stuff like that, we paid uh, 50 some odd dollars for all the other stuff, including some more coffee, three more. <laughs> Whoa, anybody want coffee? Come on over here. I've got plenty of coffee. We could share it. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, aside from that, then we went back in and got some the meat, and the meat came to like $25. But they're nice pork loins, ham, um, oh, hamburger patties. Um, got two packages of them. Um, I mean, it, it's just, you can go crazy. It's like going to Dollar Tree, okay, when Dollar Tree was only a dollar. <laughs> And, and you get all these things for a dollar, you know? I mean, wow. But we got mayonnaise, a dollar and a dollar fifty for the big things of it. I mean, how can you, you can't go wrong. And it's well worth it. So if you pick up a can that's got a little dent on it, it's not swollen. What's wrong with it? Nothing. So, anyway, so the package was a little bit, uh, honey, hand me that Brillo, the Brillo. I'll give you something here. I'm always looking for Brillo pads. I always, I can't find Brillo pads. I can't find Brillo pads. It's not that I can't find in the store. It's that I never have it when I want it. This is a hotel size soap pads, the Brillo. Look at that. I paid a dollar fifty. I think it was a dollar fifty for it. There is whew, I don't know how many in here. Uh I can't uh I'm trying to see how many there is. There's quite a few. But I don't know. I can't see how many. But anyway, it's a lot cheaper than buying those small boxes of, of Brillo pad for three and four dollars you know so it's a lot there's a lot in there but anyway that was not what i was going to talk about but i was just letting y'all know you know if you can find these outlet stores go for it man you'll save so much money and nowadays every penny you save counts every penny Okay, but I was going to talk about death, and I, okay, some of you may not want to hear this, so you can get off now. I mean, I'm not going to subject you to this, but I was, no and I've talked about it several times, and I, I think about it a lot, and it's how, uh, you know, um, how people treat their loved ones when they die how different cultures do it differently here in america most of the time somebody dies there is a viewing people go to the viewing then there is the funeral it could be at a catholic church or a baptist church or wherever may not even be in a church where they have the funeral services and then you go to the gravesite and you have another service there. That's the way most of the time here in America. Uh, we do cremations. We do do that. And a lot of people will keep the ashes. Like I have my husband's ashes up here. My mother's ashes with my husband. They're, oh, they're not mixed together. They're in separate things. <laughs> um, but, um, and some people will actually bury the urn as if though they're burying the person. There's many different ways people, sometimes they, like with my son's father's ashes, 
I put most of it out where he used to like to fish at in Oklahoma. But I saved enough for my son. It's, and then, I think what really got me thinking about this was somebody mentioned something about that because I love the Day of the Dead. I love the, the way they mask and all. Um, that is kind of satanic. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's another way that the people, different culture, the way they actually respect their dead. Because once a year for three days, down in South America, Mexico, wherever they do it. I mean, there's a lot of different places they do it. The Day of the Dead. And what they normally do, this is a normal, I don't know all the details, just some. They go to the gravesite. They clean the gravesite out. I mean, they really clean it good. They put flowers there. They put um, gifts for their loved ones. They put food out for their loved ones. They have parades. They, they, it's a kind of like a, uh, well, I'm trying to get the word out. Um, oh, my goodness. Celebration of life. That's how they celebrate it. They, to me, okay, this is me. To me, I'm not afraid of death. I Death does not bother me. I know where I'm going. When my grandmother died, and I adored my grandmother. My grandmother was my whole life. I never mourned. I missed her, and I still miss her, but I don't mourn. It's not of the, oh, God, cry. I don't. Same with my mother. I didn't mourn her. I still don't mourn her. But I do miss her. I miss talking to her, and I talk to her at times. You know, we do things strange. But that's me, too. <laughs> but I was looking at different countries and how they do it. And in Madagascar, they have the turning of the bones, and what they do is they bring forth the bones, you know, the, the, the bodies from the crypt. And they rewrap the bodies. And then they write the name on the cloth that they wrap them, rewrap them with. And they put them back. And it's to keep them, when they write it down, their name is to keep their name, reminding their name, you know, so people don't forget who they are. And I think that's really pretty cool. There are countries where they, there is cremation, but the way they do it is like they put them like on a boat and they put the body on it and they put it in the water. And then they light up whatever they use to get the fire going. And that's how they cremate them. Out in the water, it floats out. I think that's awesome. I think that's beautiful. What a beautiful celebration. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. And in Japan, in certain areas in Japan, this I read and I went, okay. They have the bone picking ceremony. <laughs> Whoa. Relatives select pieces of the bones from the ashes and put them in an urn. So where the ashes are, they, uh, okay, everybody has their way. But I don't think I want to go pick my mother's bones up, put them in the urn. I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not mine. Um Oh, okay, in Mongolia, Tibet, places like that, they have the sky burial. And in doing that, instead of burying the, the people under the ground and, and um, 
of, oh my gosh, my mind goes every di direction. They leave the people, they put them like in a higher level ground, whatever, and they leave them to the elements. How about that? Hmm. That was interesting. That was interesting to me. But, you know, like in New Orleans, they have the jazz funerals. And that's what my husband, when he died in his celebration of life, that's the way it was. We had a jazz band and we had the parade. It wasn't my choice. Believe me, it wasn't my choice. But I thought it was very nice how many people came out that loved my husband. And they we celebrated. We celebrated. We celebrated his life. And I think that's a lot of things that has to Okay, I'll be back. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I uh, had to turn it off because my son called me. And when he calls me, I'm going to answer that phone. I don't care what I'm doing. <laughs> so, uh, Lucy, we were talking about, okay, the celebration of death and how different culture celebrates things differently when a person dies. Um... You know, and I was saying about New Orleans and how they have the jazz, jazz parade. And, it, you know, death is not the end. That, I think, is something that a lot of pe people think is it's the end. My grandmother died. My mother died. My husband died. Not only one husband, several husbands died. Um, but I, I don't know. I do not see the mourning. I see the remembrance of the good times. You know, most of the time when somebody passes away, you don't think about all oh, of the bad things. You only think about the good things, you know. And I think that's the way we all should look at life and death, you look for the best, not for the worst. There's another method that I know they did that years ago here, but they're doing it quite often now, again. And I think they call it green burial. I think so. I'm not going to swear. But what they do is when the person dies, they die at home, they wash the body down, somebody's there, whoever it is, wash the bodies down, clothe it with whatever they're going to clothe it with. Then they put like a shroud. They cover them up. Depending where you're at, I imagine, I don't know. Um, somebody, a relative of somebody goes out and they dig the hole. It isn't dug by the funeral home and all that. They dig the hole. Then they put the body in. They don't go six feet down. They don't go six feet down. I think they said three, four feet, something like that. I don't, I don't really recall. But they bury them. No casket. No nothing. And that's happening a lot anymore. Late, well, I should say lately. I've understood that some cemeteries have a designated area for just that, for just the green burial. So, you know, there's so many different ways. And I don't see any of these ways being disrespectful. I think it's very respectful to the deceased. I My... Options are this, either I'm going to be cremated or the green burial. I'm not sure. Depends where I'm at when I pass. I don't know. But, uh, hey, leave me out in the desert. I'm fine. <laughs> you know, my body is gone, but I'm still there. You know, I, I don't know if that sounds right, but. I'm still in the mind and the hearts of people that cared for me. So my body's gone, but I'm there. And that's what we have to think about. It's just a body. 
just a body, just like this body. I was really pretty when I was young. I mean, I admit it, I was very vain, very pretty. But look, you age, you age, your body deteriorates to a degree. You know, we don't look the same as we did when we were teenagers. No, <laughs> I look at my arms. I don't know if you can see it, but I see all that. Yeah. But you know what? That's me. That, that's me today. That's not me when I was 18. It can't be me when I was 18. There's a lot of people that try to keep themselves looking young with all these things. Eventually, honey, I don't care what you put on you. Eventually, age is going to hit you. Wrinkles are coming in. It's not going to go away. And when we die, all our bodies are going to be the same way. Deteriorate. I know a lot of you don't want to hear this stuff, but this is a fact of life. And like somebody said to me, I don't talk about just one thing on my channel. I talk about various things, and I do. Because I talk about what I'm thinking about. And what a lot of people are thinking about, too. Because a lot of people are concerned about death and, and different cultures and, you know. But anyway, I'm going to stop now because it's going to be a while. The reason I had to stop, like I said, was my son called me and i, I got to answer it. <laughs> so, know one thing. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are a born-again Christian, if you are washed in the blood of the Lord, what are you worried about? What are you worried about? Where you're going? <laughs> your body is staying here. No matter what, your body is staying here. <laughs> Where are you going? Peace. I love you. God bless you. Keep us in your prayers, and we're keeping you all in our prayers.